Many thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Good day everyone and welcome back to the X Explorer for another video. Today we are going to build a really fun project, mm, not much to do with amateur radio, but probably we get to learn a couple of things that might be useful at some point in amateur radio. And that is a very simple FM bug. I call this one baby monitor because that's going to be the purpose for the one that I just built over here. Every little thing and every little change that you make in the circuit would influence both the transmit power, the transmit frequency and so on. But uh, without wasting any time, let's jump really quick into the schematic and um, explain to you. And after that, we're going to start testing a lot of things. I'll rebuild the project on a breadboard so we can do a lot of testing. But of course, we're not going to continue without saying thank you to my friends at PCBWay for always supporting and sponsoring the DX Explorer videos. Remember, they have great PCB prototyping services, PCB assembly, CNC, 3D printing, SMD stencils, and a lot more services available for you. If you don't have an account for PCBWay and you'd like to order some of the PCB boards that I'm presenting here in the videos, have a look in the video description, you have a link and you'll get a discount on your first order. They also have a great store with a bunch of modules that might be useful for your projects. I would really recommend you to go visit that one as well. And when you order your PCB boards, you can also order some of those available there in the module store. As I'm always saying, PCB way is the way. All right, so here's the simple circuit. I tried building it as small as possible because I was told I have to install it in a desk lamp, uh, the one that sits next to the to the baby, but it's quite big. Actually, I have enough space. I didn't have to build it that small. But anyway, it was a challenge and it was interesting. So yeah, you can build it quite small and I think you can build it even smaller if you're, if you're trying to. But um, yeah. Um, it works fun. I'm going to power it uh, from the batteries that are already inside that desk lamp. So uh, yeah, I don't have to add this thing uh, to uh, to the toy or whatever that, that is. But uh, yeah, the antenna doesn't have to be that long. I left it a little bit longer just so uh, I can test this thing for you. But I'm going to cut it short, probably only this big because it only has to reach from one room to the other. Uh, so uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be that long uh, because remember uh, it's we're using it on the FM frequencies that you can uh, receive with your FM receiver and basically it's pretty illegal to broadcast on a longer distance so uh, if your neighbor will hear you in the, his receiver uh, maybe that's not a good sign and <laughs> you might have to find uh, probably um, a different kind of baby monitor that you can buy uh, from uh, from a store but uh, yeah it works fun I t I've been testing it because I was curious to see how stable it is in frequency and I left it outside uh, next to my camper overnight and somewhere around three o'clock at night it started drifting uh, it was going higher in frequency and I believe that's because the batteries were uh, the level of the batteries was getting low um, as it was getting cold outside but it was not drifting that much and it was pretty stable, I was impressed. And uh, what you see on the schematic on the screen, um, I also placed a 2.2 volts Zener diode. So basically we are going to power the circuit from a 3 volt battery, where in my case is two AA's uh, 1.5 volts batteries in series, so it's uh, 3 volts. Uh, but as the power goes low, the frequency will drift and I added that Zener diode to avoid that uh, drifting. And basically once the battery uh, drains down to 2.2 volts, uh, probably it won't work uh, that long and <laughs> uh, I guess uh, we will start going crazy after that. But anyway, so far it works fantastic. I really like it. Um, and uh, anyway, I hope now that uh, people that kept sending me emails um, are quite happy about uh, the fact that we're finally making a video um, about this one. So uh, what we're going to do right now, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to leave this one over here. We're going to put some talking on YouTube or something that we can listen. Or we're going to take the receiver, go outside and see how far uh, from uh, from my camper van we can still receive this thing. Probably quite far with this big antenna. Um, so uh, 
after that we're going to come back we're going to replicate this circuit on a breadboard and i'm going to explain to you why your circuit did not work and why you had troubles with it and i'll show you uh, practically uh, how changing the value of each part not every part but most of the parts the most important ones um, the way you change that it will change also the frequency that uh, this um, transmitter is working on so anyway let's uh, keep the video short and uh, move faster let's go outside and make a little test designer jobbe med det då jag startar med att bygga jag lagt ett kretskort nederst i boxen här är morsan på linn gång kristall rör Här är antennutgång här är hobbelingång brukar en miniack Jag har eh, gjort en del experiment och lagat en prototyp här All right, now I apologize that I turn off the light, but I don't want to uh, hear into the FM receiver, the interference from the from the LED light, uh, just so we can uh, speak quietly. So right now we are with the this transmitter over here. It's uh, the second one we built. Uh, this one is resonating on a different frequency comparing to the original one that we built earlier but uh, the reason i built it uh, just a little bit differently because i wanted to show you the influence that uh, changing parts and values of the components uh, and how do they affect the circuit and the transmit frequency now of course i will repeat myself uh, just be careful with this one because you don't want to transmit too far far away you will get in trouble and if you see a car on the street with an antenna on top trying to search for you it's already too late you're already you're already in trouble so remember uh, cut the antenna as short as possible just uh, to be able to uh, pick it uh, up on your fm receiver if your neighbor can hear you well uh, that's not a good thing it's fun to experiment and it's uh, strictly for experimenting purposes or in case you want to uh, use it as a baby monitor as my friend will use it um, uh, feel free to do so but uh, don't bother other people uh, because it's illegal to transmit on the FM band since it's a public FM band and not only that but what I'm trying to show you over here is that you're not only transmitting on 92 megahertz uh, this one over here you're also transmitting the second harmonic which is on somewhere around 183 megahertz and you can hear myself in the receiver next to me and you're also transmitting on 275 megahertz and so on because this one only goes up to 350 megahertz but if you go higher you will be able to hear the other uh, see the other harmonics as well so don't get in trouble okay it's fun it's fun to experiment and play around but uh, that's it um, all right, so let's talk really quick about uh, about the the schematic over here. So this one is built a little bit differently. Uh, this one is built according to the schematic that we had on the screen earlier uh, in the video. Um, for this version, I'm using a different transistor, and uh, I'm using a 2N4401. Now built with the same component values as uh, this one over here just because i changed the transistor uh, the frequency automatically went down to 74 megahertz so my main fundamental frequency it was actually on 74 megahertz not on 92 as it is right now so for that i had to change the value of the inductor and instead of eight turns like i'm using over here I only had to use six turns so I had to uh, decrease the value of the inductor uh, in order to raise the uh, resonant frequency up to 92 megahertz now look let me turn off the receiver because it's going to get noisy over here look what happens if I remove the 10 picofarads capacitor 
that is placed in parallel with the inductor in the schematic. So our frequency went up to 108 MHz. So uh, you can play around and adjust the frequency that uh, you transmit on either by changing the value of the 10 picofarads capacitor. Let me just put it back really quick. Or you can spread or tighten the turns of the inductor in order to change the value. Um, I believe if you uh, bring them close to each other, the inductance will increase. If you spread them out, uh, the inductance will decrease. So that will also change the frequency that you're transmitting on. Now another thing. I have the 100 uh, nanofarads capacitor on the power, out, uh, power input. Let me remove the LED. Look what happens if I remove the 100 nanofarads capacitor. The frequency changed again. So right now we are down to 84.8 megahertz. Let's put this one back. Now uh, I don't have any other power source because I'm, I'm using it uh, for other things. But if I change the power, right now I'm powering this circuit with uh, 5 volts, not with 3 volts uh, like I do in here. So as soon as I will power this one with 3 volts instead of 5, the frequency will uh, change again. So even the power that you're powering the, the transmitter with, it will uh, the voltage basically uh, the voltage level of the uh, that you use to power the circuit it will also change your uh, transmitting frequency so it's a lot of variables but that's what it is when you get to work with a very very simple circuit and that is probably the reason why uh, many of the people that send me messages and they said that they tried building this one and uh, they couldn't get it to work maybe that's the reason um, I remember I used the transistor. I can't remember the, the what type of the transistor um, you know, I was using. I believe it was BC107. I'm not sure. I might be wrong. Uh, but uh, that's what I used uh, first when I built the transmitter. And I was not using the analyzer to see where exactly uh, my uh, transmitter is uh, is transmitting. And I was trying to uh, adjust the value of the inductor and the capacitor so I'm able to receive the transmitter on the FM radio and I did uh, probably uh, I believe six, six or seven hours later after tweaking around with the inductor and I had to uh, remove so many turns on the inductor in order to get it to um, to be able to listen into the receiver uh, this uh, little transmitter that I only ended up with three turns on the inductor so that is how small uh, value it had and uh, guess what when I turned on the analyzer and I looked uh, I was not listening onto the fundamental frequency I was actually listening on the second harmonic which was weaker but I was also transmitting on a lower frequency as well so then I rebuilt the circuit while watching this one and I realized that the transistor just didn't want to go higher than I believe it was 74 uh, megahertz something like that so it just didn't want to go higher than 74 megahertz so the only way to be able to listen uh, it was to listen to the second harmonic which was a lot weaker so yeah uh, this is the the experiment but I believe if you respect it and uh, you build it the way it is in the schematic uh, using this uh, the same transistor and the same number of turns of the inductor uh, you should get pretty close and you'll be able to um, listen and uh, basically to, to hear the, the transmitter into the FM receiver so again play around with the with the inductor you can spread the turns on the coil you can tie them you can change the value of the 10 uh, picofarads capacitor and hopefully you'll get it to resonate on the frequency that you desire so anyway that's it i'm going to get uh, with uh, to end to, to end up with another long video and i don't want to i also wanted to show you the power consumption 
of this uh, transmitter. I didn't get to measure the other one, but this one in particular, remember I'm powering it with 5 volts. Um, and I believe in this one I'm using uh, 220, uh, sorry this one over here, this is 220 um, ohms a resistor instead of 270 and uh, the power consumption is somewhere around 14-15 milliamps so it's very small power consumption the battery should last uh, quite a bit <laughs> it shouldn't drain so easy again it's a very very simple schematic one microphone uh, one transistor you have four capacitors three if you don't want to use the 100 nanofarads one on the power rail and uh, two resistors and a small inductor and this is the entire FM bug <laughs> that uh, you get to build and uh, listen uh, yourself onto the FM receiver so yeah anyway I hope I answered all the questions to the emails that I received for the past year because I, I think I received at least 20 or 25 emails for this project in particular and I have a few more um, about uh, building an FM receiver and that will come very soon as well I'm trying to uh, fulfill that uh, <laughs> that wish of the people that are watching the channel and after that we're going to get back to some more uh, fun and entertaining amateur radio projects old school style so anyway thanks so much for watching this video i hope it helped and uh, i'll see you in the next video until then thanks so much for watching and 73 from yankee oscar 6 delta x-ray echo